Hi, my name is Taylor Liss, and this is my presentation for my final project in CS665, in which I created a spaceship building simulator. So my main design goal was to create a system uh, for use in a video game that would allow you to construct spaceships from a variety of different components. Uh, when thinking about this design, I decided that I wanted to have three core ship components. Um, the first being the hull, the second being thrusters, and the third being weapons. I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting, so I decided to add three tiers of each core component. Uh, so for example, the hull has a light, medium, and heavy variant. The thrusters have basic, advanced, and experimental. And the weapon has a laser, a cannon, or a missile. Now, when implementing this, uh, there's a bit of a problem in that if I want to make a class for a particular ship design, say I have a ship and that ship has a uh, light hull, a basic thruster, and a laser weapon, which are all tier one uh, components, um, that's fine. But let's say I want to change one of those instead of having a tier one thruster, change it to a tier two advanced thruster, uh, well, that's going to have to be another class. And if instead I want a tier three thruster, uh, which is the experimental thruster, that would have to be another class. Or if I wanted to have a tier one um, light hull, a tier one basic thruster, and a tier two um, cannon weapon, that would have to be another class. So you can see that every single configuration would require another class. And what ends up happening is you have too many classes. Uh, you have three to the third combinations, which would be 27 classes in total, which is just kind of ridiculous. So to mitigate this, I decided to use the bridge pattern. Um, with the bridge pattern, you start with your uh, basic class, which would be the spaceship. And the spaceship contains references to three objects, a hull, a thruster, and a weapon. Um, but we implement those using uh, abstract classes. So here, the hull, thruster, and weapon are abstract classes. And we have all of our actual concrete classes um, extend from those. So for example, we have the hull, the thrusters, and the weapons extend from those abstract classes. Um, and this is really great because it allows us to um, expand upon this if we need to in the future. For example, uh, if we need to add a fourth type of hull, uh, we can just have it extend the hull abstract class. Uh, it's very simple to use. Uh, same for the thrusters and the weapon. And what this looks like in code is uh, this. So here we have the spaceship class. And you can see the spaceship class has a hull, a thruster, a weapon. Um, and also, I gave uh, the ability to have ships have names. Um, and then when we want to instantiate it, um, we just pass in a hull, a thruster, a weapon, and a name, and it will create that ship um, by setting those uh, references. So the actual abstract classes look something like this. Here's the abstract hull class, and every hull has a health, um, and you can get the health, or you can take damage, which subtracts from its health. And then we extend from that uh, concrete classes, in that case would be the heavy hull or one of the other hulls. And with these, we just set their actual health value. Um, so for thrusters, same thing. We have an abstract class thruster uh, that has a speed, a max speed, um, and we can toggle its power on and off. Um, and we extend that to uh, a basic thruster, which is uh, a certain max speed, same for the other types of thrusters. And then same thing for a weapon. Weapons have strengths, the ability to fire at other ships. Um, and for the laser weapon, we just set its strength. So that, that's how I uh, designed this to take advantage of the bridge pattern. Um, and this works really well. But there is uh, a bit of a problem with it. Um, and that's whenever we want to uh, implement it or create a new spaceship, we end up having this really long parameter list. So here's an example of a spaceship uh, being created. And you see, I have to pass in a new hull, a new thruster, a new weapon, and a name. And it's kind of long. And if I wanted to add more functionality to the spaceship, that parameter list would grow. Uh, and that really kind of becomes unwieldy and 
for other developers down the line, maybe it's hard for them to understand what every single parameter is for um, when you really have a lot of them. So one way to get around this is to use uh, a different pattern, which is the builder pattern. So with the builder pattern, you have an interface. Um, and in this case, I call it a spaceship builder. And the spaceship builder interface um, says that anything that implements it must have uh, these methods, which are to set the hull, set the thruster, set the weapon, and uh, return a spaceship. So uh, we can invoke this using uh, a director class. And the director um, is a concrete class that we make. And we say that a director has a spaceship builder uh, reference. And it also has the ability to construct spaceships, which makes the spaceship uh, builder run all of its sets, its set hull, set thruster, threat weapon, and then get spaceship, which makes the spaceship builder return its spaceship object. So for using this, I created four classes that all implement the spaceship builder interface. Uh, Light fighter uses all tier one components, medium uses tier two, heavy uses tier three, uh, and random uses a mixture of all three um, using random numbers. So for example, it could have a tier two medium hull, a tier one basic thruster, and a tier three missile weapon. Um, then to actually get one of these to build a spaceship for us, we can just do something really simple, which is first we create a spaceship builder object. In this case, um, I call it LFB, where it is a new light fighter builder. Then we create a new director object and pass in that builder. And then we just tell the director to construct its spaceship. And it uses the uh, set hull, set thruster, set weapon of the builder to build it. And then when we want to get the spaceship out of the director, we just tell it to return uh, the spaceship object using the get spaceship method. And what this looks like in code is this here. So uh, here we have the spaceship builder interface and you can see it just tells us that we need to have a set weapon, hull, thruster and get spaceship methods. And then we have the director which takes a spaceship builder object um, upon construction. And um, if we do the construct spaceship method, it tells that uh, builder to uh, set its hull weapon and thruster to wherever it is. And then when we do get spaceship, it tells that builder to return the spaceship. So for example, here's the light fighter uh, uh, class, which implements spaceship builder. Um, and you can see that for the light fighter, it sets its weapon to a laser weapon. It sets its hull to a light hull, it sells its thruster to a basic thruster and it's get spaceship method returns the spaceship. Um, for comparison, here's the random fighter. Uh, this one does a random number for uh, each weapon hull and thruster. So here you can see the weapon um, could be a laser cannon or missile and the hull could be set randomly and the thruster is set manually as well, but it still returns a spaceship just as normal. Um, so that was how I uh, got around the issue of having really long parameter names. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I wanted to do is I wanted to have the ability for two spaceships to uh, fight against each other. And for that, I implemented uh, an arena. And the idea is that you put two spaceships in an arena and they will fight until one of them is destroyed. And in my mind, uh, you should only really ever have one arena object at a time. The reason being that um, if this was a real game and you had the ability to make more than one arena, uh, because there's all that combat going on, I imagine it to be a very, uh, uh, resource intensive um, class. So we don't wanna have more than one of those ever at a time. So to facilitate that, I use a singleton pattern when creating the arena. So with our arena class, um, it has, uh, it takes two spaceships, um, which you can set using the set combatants method, um, but it also uh, has a private uh, arena singleton object that's created upon uh, class creation. And the only way to get it is with the get arena method uh, because we have a private uh, empty constructor. And then once the spaceships are set, you can run the battle method to make uh, two ships fight. So uh, in code, the arena looks like this. So you can see um, it's a singleton 
and it returns a new arena upon creation. Um, we have our private class here, uh, sorry, private constructor here, and we have our uh, public method for returning that singleton object. Then we can set the spaceships after it's been created, and then we can actually run the battle. Uh, and so the way the battle works is it just uh, first checks to see who has the fastest speed with their thrusters and whoever has the fastest speed gets to go first. So I'll show you an example here. Uh, here we build two random fighters. Um, and uh, one thing I should mention about random fighters, they're given a random name. I included a random name generator in this. So uh, fighter one is Tommy's house, which is a basic thruster missile weapon and light hull. And fighter two is Rosalind's giraffe, <laughs> which is an experimental thruster cannon weapon and heavy hull. So uh, because Rosalind's giraffe has the experimental thruster, which is faster than Potomi House's basic thruster, uh, Rosalind giraffe has a speed advantage it gets to attack first. Um, so then it takes uh, its cannon weapons damage um, and deals it to the hull of Potomi's house. And then Potomi gets to fire back. Um, and then whoever's hull gets destroyed first uh, loses and the other one wins. So in this case, uh, Rosalind's giraffe wins. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the three major design patterns I used for my project. Um, if you're curious, uh, this is what the actual uh, UML diagram looks like. Um, you can see it's just a more detailed version of what I've shown before. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, my presentation and thought it was cool. I had a lot of fun making it. And uh, thank you very much.